Welcome back, friends. Today, we're hanging out in the Fine Line in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's actually my first time here, but it's not my first time with this guest. I luckily got him for like seven, eight minutes when he was in Eau Claire back in August, and we kept in touch. I was like, please, please let me interview you. Please. We made it work. Welcome back to the show, Tom Higginson. Hey, hey. Good to be here. Dude, you're here on a... uh, Dude, thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) You're on a tour with Plain White Tees, right? Because your new album we briefly talked about on the show is actually out. It's out now. Yes. So we... This is like our first tour on the new album our first tour actually since like 2019 since which before the crazy. pandemic exactly wow, okay, cool. yeah so yeah feels good to be uh to be back out on the road what's the song from the album one of the new ones which song have people at the show has been singing along with the most so i don't mean you know i don't mean to like you know toot our our horn but honestly <laughs> yeah. like the new album I'm we're all kind of amazed how well it's being, uh, you know, received Received. by the audience. Like we'll play a song that like, you know, because we've done a bunch of videos and stuff for the new album, some of the songs. And we'll play a song that like is like track 11 or something thinking like, okay, we we want to play this, but nobody in the crowd is going to know this one yet. And people are going off and singing along and stuff. It's really, really been amazing to see the crowd. Uh, you know, the connection to the album. It's been great. How many songs did you put out as singles and that have videos? I saw... So... Well, yeah, you, go ahead. Say which okay, one. Okay, well, I, I don't... Uh, so Spaghetti Tattoo is the first song we put out, and that actually has a real music video where we're all puppets, which is kind of fun. <laughs> cool. That was probably out when I uh, hung with you uh, over the summer. I think that was already out. Um, and then we had a song called Happy that we put out that just had, a, like, a lyric video. And then we had a song, uh, Would You Even, which has a real video. That one, honestly, probably is, like, in the live show, that's probably the one that goes the hardest, like, with the crowd. Would that's you my favorite even? one from the oh, new album. No and actually, when I interviewed you, it had came out the night before. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah. 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 So then I got to see the music video come out shortly after. Did you record that music video in Chicago? Where no, that, that? Was in, uh, that was in the suburbs of L.A., that was out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where are you living now? Are you in Chicago? Or are you in LA? I heard somewhere you were in Nashville. Uh, so doing? yeah, I'm uh, kind of like making, trying to make Nashville uh, more of a full time spot. I love, uh, I do a lot of like writing and producing and stuff. For so like other Nashville, people as well. Yep. Oh, cool. So Nashville is kind of like, uh, especially like I feel like since the pandemic, I think I feel like it's just been really a hot spot for just kind of people coming there ba- back in the day it was like you had to go to LA to do right. you know to find some cool people but Nashville is kind of booming with that um so yeah Nashville's kind of main you know uh spend a lot of time there but I'm still in Chicago and and LA I'm I'm kind of everywhere yeah. you know part, I mean I think part of the life LA in general everyone's kind of disappearing from there because when I was going there a lot during the pandemic everyone was talking about Austin and talking and oh, in general totally. like everyone is kind of dispersing to these other places I think partially just because of the expensive part of it but it's yeah. kind of nice you can kind of make music and in general do things from anywhere kind of anywhere yeah it's really yeah. it is really cool so tell me more about the tour how long has it been how many stops was it in total and you so guys are almost done we are yeah we have five more shows including yeah. tonight um yeah i don't know it's, it's funny because it feels like it's flying by yeah. i mean the whole tour was only like a month long anyway but um definitely weird that there's only five more shows because i feel I, I was kind of talking to you before but because you know you're kind of just getting into you know getting into the into the groove into like you know uh getting all the rust off you know yeah and then now it's like almost over um but it's been really fun uh the opening band pollyanna um amazing band became great friends with those guys i try to watch them every night um we're playing like i said a bunch of the the new songs live of course we're playing all the old hits and stuff like that right um so yeah just really fun to be back on the road yeah loving it what song do you start with these days and do you still end with delilah uh so we we start with our time now which is an old one from uh, our every second counts album um but then we kind of go right into a couple new songs after that so it's kind of give them something that they know sure. then maybe some of the new you know and like i said it's crazy how a lot of people that are coming to these shows they do know the new album already uh yeah. even though it's only been out a couple months um and then yeah we actually end our encore um, is uh, Delilah and then Rhythm of Love. Are you still wearing that sweet pink jacket? You know what? I've got uh, <laughs> I've got a, a variety of pink jackets on really? this tour. No, I actually do. I've got a pink blazer. Oh, dope! I've got that hot pink jacket, um, and then I've got like a you know a couple. I've got a bright yellow corduroy jacket. 
kind of having fun because uh, the, the actually the weirdly the colors of our album cover we have like this pink stripe it's like a black and white album cover of a t-shirt anybody that hasn't seen it yet it's like a pretty funny kind of just on the nose like you know plain white tees album right. cover just a a t-shirt hanging there really cool and then uh yeah there's like a pink stripe down the side but then in the album we use like yellow and pink and so basically all of my uh my jackets and my outfits on the tour are like pink and yellow like in black and white basically so who is your stylist finding all of those uh, <laughs> that would be me and then my son uh he was we we're kind of going through the closet and like oh this would be cool oh this would be cool well, these were things you already had. like all stuff i already had yeah coincidentally i guess i just you know tend to gravitate towards pink and yellow so that's sure. cool what's the plans with the plain white tees after this i imagine you put out the album you go on a tour and this is kind of a litmus test to see like how well everything is going totally that's exactly what it is and uh so far i mean a lot of the shows on this tour have sold out um almost everyone has been close to it or packed uh so it's been really great we're uh, right after this tour, we're going home for just a few days, and then we're heading to Brazil oh, for cool. the first time ever, uh, which is going to be amazing. I know we've got a lot of fans out there that we've never been able to meet and play for in person, so that's going to be amazing to get to uh, Brazil. Uh, we're doing like some festival things over the summer, and uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to do uh, more touring later in the year. Like wow. basically the whole year, we're going to be out playing shows, but I think it's going to be. I mean, I don't want to, uh, you know, speak yet because I'm not positive, but I'm guessing there will be another like full tour uh, this year. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's exciting after yeah. so many years of not being able to do things because oh, yeah. during that time frame, let's talk about this a little bit. You were making a lot of other music, right? Because Plain White Tees was kind of on pause to a certain degree. Yeah. So, yeah, the um, what well, we were talking about this earlier. Yeah, my I got to live my... 80s synth pop fantasy by putting out making an entire album under uh million miler a little solo project that i did during the pandemic yeah because what else do you do during a pandemic besides sit around and watch 80s movies and make some you know 80s music right well i mean i didn't but i'm glad that you did is <laughs> yeah. that like a one and done that was 2022 it's out and it's never you coming know back, what or? no way i'm i i love that album I'm super proud of that album anybody out there that hasn't checked it out um yeah million miler it's a little solo project that i did if you like plain white tees at all I think you'd really love it's like playing my tees if it was 1985 basically that's what the album sounds like and um, I'm definitely now that this plain white tees actual plain white tees album is out um, definitely gonna gonna dip back into that million miler vibe uh, as soon as I get a chance maybe you know after this tours over maybe I'll try to put some stuff together yeah so I, I just it's like a passion project yeah is that why you didn't just use your name I feel like purposely not using your name make it's like the worst promotion idea ever kind of you know what i mean Wait, what do you mean the worst promotion idea? <laughs> if you put if you put it out as just tom higginson everyone would go oh yeah okay and then this but when you have a totally different name like that i think a it's, lot of people that would otherwise listen to it just never discover it yeah right? we'll have no idea what that is That's what I'm saying, totally yeah. well i've kind of thought that you know i feel like people associate uh like if i was to do a tom higginson album i kind of feel like people would think it was like just like Play White Tees, like acoustic guitars oh, and like yeah. love songs and stuff okay. like that. Yeah, that makes that sense. That was my idea. So it's just kind of making something that is just really unique in its own, kind of can have its own universe. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I made a couple music videos as well, and uh, they're definitely like got that 80s vibe to them. So yeah, it kind of, I wanted it to kind of be apart from Play White Tees, apart from you know what you would think when you heard you know the name tom higginson i guess sure do you yeah. what goals do you have for that are you like do you, you want know, to put out much for singles or is it literally just like i'm gonna put this as for fun when i want to i'm proud of it but there's no real yeah like i said just more of a passion project yeah, okay. uh just loved making the songs love um you know putting like i said the 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 visuals together and stuff sure. it's just a lot of fun um and yeah i mean i don't know i, I i'm I would love to play some shows uh, as Million Miler. I haven't, haven't yet. I've done some, like like I said, some video things and did like a little live performance for like a Christmas thing cool. that uh, that uh, I did a couple years ago. Like, in again, in the pandemic, it's like you had to figure out ways to just be creative and yeah. have fun with it. 
Um, but yeah, we'd definitely love to play shows. Uh, definitely love to. We made a full length, or I made a full length album. I've got it on vinyl and everything, so I'd love to just sell a bunch of those and just yeah, get the, get the name out there a little bit more. Sure, but I suppose with like name the plain white tees, there's certain expectations that the whole group collectively, the label, like everybody involved has like a standard of okay we need to be able to reach these things these are our goals and whatever i suppose doing this is like a there's no pressure really from anybody else so exactly it really felt like it felt like how it felt at the beginning of plain white tees when we were just making music because we wanted to and right. because it was fun and you know we wanted we there was that excitement of just like playing shows and playing the songs for your friends and stuff sure definitely kind of tap back into that with the million miler project and that's kind of funny because the whole project itself is a nostalgic themed project from the sound to the you know the song topics to again even the feeling that i got making it you know sure so, is that kind of where the name itself comes from is because you've been traveling million miles i doing mean this or what? so yeah definitely um i'm i'm actually a, mil- a million miler flyer uh on united oh because we've been flying so much sure. uh with the plain white tees of course for decades yeah um so yeah it was like man i want to think of a name that yeah that feels like it feels it has a kind of a worldly vibe a nostalgic vibe it you know more timeless like it it, it doesn't really mean a specific thing even though it kind of does i don't know it's like I a just, secretive alias i like it yeah it's it, exactly <laughs> it's like an alias and then i call myself millie because oh, cool. million miler it's like a little nick my little nickname millie so Crap. there you go do you enjoy coffee I love coffee. I know because you have a page about it. Yeah. Tell me about it. You have an Instagram page with your son, right? Yeah, That's so just me, me and my son, uh, we have an Instagram account called The Bean Babies. And basically because he travels around with me a lot of the time. So we kind of started, you know, we'd find like cool coffee spots in every city we're in. Yeah. And he just started like, you know, like, Dad, take a selfie. And we, we would take a picture together. And he, like, one day had just started this account. I didn't even know he was doing it. (laughs) And so he started this account. Yeah, Bean Babies. uh, I believe it's a Bean Babies Coffee Company or something like that. But I think it's just Bean Babies if you go on Instagram. Um, But anyway, yeah. So it's just me and him taking random selfies at at all these awesome coffee shops around the country. What's the most memorable coffee shop from this tour? Uh, On this tour? Okay. Well... We went to this place, so the whole tour, just a few days ago, we were in Columbus, and Columbus, Ohio, and the whole tour, the guys, some of the guys in the band were talking about this coffee shop called Fox in the Snow, and how it's like one of the best coffee shops in the country, and oh my god, I can't wait to get to Columbus, and we got there, and we, I was, I was all excited about it, and honestly, I, it was totally good. But, sure. like, I didn't, like, maybe they just overhyped it. Yeah. Because, like, if I had just gone in blind, I would have been like, damn, this place is great. You know, yeah. I love this place. But because they were, like, you know, I had my hopes set on, like, the greatest experience of a lifetime. And then it was just like, oh, yeah, it was just a cool coffee shop. You know, I feel like that's how it is when you travel, too. My, my dad just went to, like, the Caribbean for the first time, right? Oh, wow. And he was telling me about the trip. And he's like, oh, yeah, I don't. It just was nothing surprising. I was like, you know, uh, that's the problem is because you Google everything about right. it. So you saw all the best like versions of what this, you know, bay looks like. And totally. then you go there and it's and like, oh, there's yeah. nothing new to be yep. excited looks about. like the pictures. Yeah. Well, this coffee is <laughs> new for you. So this is minimum wage Tim's coffee. It's from Minneapolis. And cool. this one is uh, from Papua New Guinea, but it's just this small boutique coffee brand that I uh, love it, man. Thank yeah, you so much. Just Tim does. So we give away one bag of coffee to you, and then one person listening gets to win a free bag of coffee. All they have to do is follow Minimum Wage Tim's and then cool. DM him the password, which this episode is Black Coffee White Tea. Black Coffee White Tea. Yeah, I and like then, that. Uh, yeah, he'll ship you an exact uh, replica of that bag <laughs> so that way you get to have one. Amazing. Um, yeah, for well, yourself. thank you for this. Thank you, Minimum Wage Tim. So now that we are, you're on this tour, you're almost done with this tour. If you could pick any band, whether they're like this massive, massive hit right at this moment where you guys would be the opening ones for them or just a tiny little band from nowhere, can't be the band that you're currently on tour with. Okay. Who would you take a 90 day tour with? Oh man. Well, selfishly, uh, 100 Gex. I love 100 Gex. Sure. Um, they actually are, they're on the wall here. When I walked in, I was like, oh damn. I, right away I saw their name. They signed this place. Uh, 
But yeah, they um, are you familiar with them at all? I am after listening to or in, well, listening back to the interview we did. Oh, okay. I went and listened to them, and I, then I, after I shouted listening them out to, on that one too, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah they're just uh, I, I don't know. I just love them. They're the I think they're the the most um, important thing happening in music right now. Uh, just really, really stoked on their on their music and kind of pushing boundaries and just. Yeah, they're great. Have you met them in person or no? I have. Yeah, they're super nice. Uh, I actually did Coachella. I played um, Hey There Delilah on the Emo Night stage right uh, before their set. Yeah. They went on. So, yeah, I got to hang with them a little bit at Coachella. And, um, yeah, super nice. Um, yeah, it was funny. I was actually there. Their A&R girl was back there, too. And I was like trying to like tell her how much I loved them and I'm like we gotta make these songs hits and you know I was like getting all passionate about it with her probably uh, yeah probably was like going getting a little bit too going a little bit too um, like I was like make I was I, I think I feel like I was getting mad I was like why aren't these songs <laughs> bigger you know why aren't these guys here anyway do but you yeah, have, do you ever fan gets. out on anybody anymore? Do you have moments I mean, of geeking out I'm on people? I'm a total fanboy. I mean, that's why yeah. I play music because I love it so much. You know right. what I mean? It's like, um, so yeah, definitely, um, you know, I, after meeting the Gex, I was like in the little VIP section, just like rocking out to them, watching them for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a fan. Like when I love something, you know, I really like, you know, I buy the mer. I mean, I got a Stranger Things hoodie on right now, you know, it's like yeah. anything that like really hits me hard, like as far as that, like movies or music or, you know, pop culture stuff, I go hard. You what know? was the I go last, all in. like, what was the last acoustic song that just like a one singular artist put out that you're really passionate about? Wow. Acoustic song. You know, what's funny is that like, I'm not a huge like I don't really listen to a lot of like soft music like that like even though Play White Tees were kind of known for our acoustic stuff yeah um yeah I don't know uh I will I will say the band that we're on tour with uh, right now Pollyanna have a really beautiful acoustic song that they play every night um called Pathetic it's a really great song um man besides that I feel like yeah like isn't there always like every like four or five years there's like a acoustic song that hits really big you yeah. know and i don't know what what's been like the latest like big acoustic song i can't even think of one i don't know my favorite one which isn't huge um is called a thousand highways and that's by that artist sunreal that i mentioned to you mm, okay. so he's kind of like a mixture of he's he came up in the rap industry um but then he kind of made a lot more folk kind of music mm. and so now it's like a mixture of hip-hop with folk cool. but then kind of like has rap music too it's huh. kind of a mixture of all that that's cool if you got to do a single if you're just going to put out one single with an artist that's going to be under million miler so it's going to be like an 80s kind of like sound yeah okay who, who would you make a song with man that's tough it'd be fun um to like dip into like somebody like from the 80s you know like Hey, yeah, Pat no Benatar. Be That's hey, Madonna. Who I was you know, say like, yeah, Pat what Benatar. are you guys doing? <laughs> um, that would be really fun. Um, there is an artist called The Midnight that I really love. They do, they're like a modern kind of synth wave yeah. band uh, that they're really great. Um, but yeah, I'd pro oh, how about Cindy Lauper? Come on. Oh, sure. Yeah, let's go. I, I think let's everyone go. would love to hear uh, hear that collab. That would be really fun. So when you when you're putting out music, like you have your new album. Wait, whatever. hang on, real quick. I actually yeah. met Cindy Lauper. Oh, cool. Because we did a song. Uh, I wrote a song for the SpongeBob musical <laughs> that was on Broadway. Sweet. And Cindy Lauper also wrote a song for the SpongeBob musical. And so at like the premieres and stuff, I got to say hi to her and meet her. So I feel like maybe there's a connection. Maybe a Cindy Lauper, Million Miler. You know. I feel Maybe like it's not too far off. I don't know. I don't think it is. <laughs> I'm just saying. People I think you, are, you've planted that seed now. Now I'm going to go and think about it. And people are try to, so much try to more it reachable than they used to be. Totally. You oh, know, yeah. and a lot of people are doing stuff that where it's like, well, it's not like we have to spend months on this. Oh, like totally. It could just be a thing. Hey, if you yeah. don't shoot your shot. One you day, don't, get together, see yeah. what happens. Yeah, you don't shoot totally. the shot. You don't know what's going to happen. So if you, if you could pick any song, because what I was going to say is when you have albums come out and stuff, you work with the marketing team and the label and whatever, and they pick out, these are the things 
singles. These are the ones we have budgets for music videos. Sure. And there's things that are dictated that way. If you could pick any song that there isn't a music video for from anything that you've made, there's oh, wow. no budget. You do whatever the hell you want. What is it going to be? Huh. That's like impossible because <laughs> like I love, you know, obviously I love everything that, that, that I put out, you know? Um, geez. I mean, the song track one off of our new album is called Young Tonight, and that's one of my favorite songs on the album. And that wasn't a single or a video or anything. Uh, so maybe that song, I don't know, Young Tonight's great. Like I said, the Million Miler stuff I really love as well. Um, what would the Young Tonight one look like? Would it be you on like trains in the middle of the night in Brooklyn or what? Ooh. Kind of a good a, idea. I like right? it. I like that. <laughs> um,. I mean, yeah, let's do that. Perfect. Let's make it. I would love to do like a 10 song selection of all like between everything you've made because you have oh two my side God. projects, right? Where you could just like pick out a few from different ones and then we can just play that as a whole episode on the radio. <laughs> I love that. That'd be nice. I get to program it in. So that's very doable. Ooh. Okay. Well, okay. So a 10 song from the side projects, yeah. 10 songs. Okay. We got to go from Million Miler. We got to go Zuma Beach. She ain't coming back. Um, let's see. Zuma Beach. She ain't coming back. Lennon, you got any ideas over there? Oh, he's got his headphones on. Uh, man, you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, freaking Kids in Love and High School Summer. Those four songs from Million Miler. And then my uh, side project, it's like a punk rock side project called TLB, where I play the drums. Uh, we got to go... Can we swear on this thing? Yeah, why not? We've got I've Been Doing Fun Shit Without You, <laughs> Totally Fucked For You, <laughs> uh, Till Death Do Us Party. Um, let's see. I mean, I think that'll... That if, if if we don't have you hooked by those seven songs from those two projects, then then I don't know. You're dead inside, I think. Yeah. Both those projects are just so fun and there's so much love poured into them. Fun and love that I feel like they'd be infectious to, to anybody that hears them. And I like that you can just do something different. Like you talked about before with this new album, it's like the most plain white tees. Well, that means that there is a branding of plain white tees that you have to try to fit to a certain degree. Totally. Having something where you don't have to fit into anything is kind of nice. It's kind of, it, it's definitely freeing. And it helps, almost like it helps free up your head for plain white tees yeah, you know totally. what i mean it's like okay cool i did my punk rock stuff i did my 80s synthy stuff now let's grab an acoustic guitar and write some bangers for the tees you know yeah i think that's what works with me for art for like you know like i paint these shoes normally i paint murals and sure. i get stuck on trying to come up with like a new character that i want to paint because that's primarily what i do is like sure. big monsters you know oh yeah if i can't think of anything i gotta go do something else and that's what then triggers me to think about it yep. you know and that's the nice balance between doing the show but then also having my store but then also doing art Hell if yeah. i'm really stuck on one thing i just move on to another but we're not gonna be stuck we're gonna do this <laughs> rapid fire uh -oh. we don't have time to be stuck okay all right you ready let's do it favorite girl scout cookie oh uh thin mints have you had the quick trip thin milk or the quick trip mint milk have you seen that no dude quick trip like the convenience store yeah, chain of course. they came out with a mint milk and it tastes just like thin mints and it's been like a big joke to everyone but i tried it and it actually tastes like those they're Damn. pretty good that's you genius like it, yeah it's ridiculous what size shoe do you wear uh nine so these shoes wouldn't fit you okay favorite cartoon <laughs> as a kid uh favorite cartoon as a kid man i like probably flintstones as a kid if you had to get one tattoo like one character tattooed from one of the cartoons as a kid which one is it gonna be well i'd go probably like bart simpson oh, that'd be the coolest tattoo i feel like i've seen a lot of people with it but it's good every single time oh yeah what's the last tv show that you binged that i binged you know what's funny is i oh okay uh beef i don't think i've seen that did it's, that win uh, some golden globes or something i, I think thought it I heard did yeah it. i was like a24 so i'm a sucker for a24 like the movie company anything oh, okay. that they do i try to see and uh they did that they did that with netflix beef um so that's honestly the only reason i watched it because a24 was involved what's special um, about a24 is it just like they're just they make really 
everything they do is really unique and really like left of center. Like there's no, you're never going to get something that you've seen before or like sure. anything normal from a 24. So it's always exciting. What's something else they made? Just oh give man. Me perspective. Uh, so they did everything everywhere all at once is probably okay. their biggest, uh, but they've done, um, like Midsommar, sure. Hereditary. They've done uh, the Whale. They did. Oh man! They um, talk about the like hardest movie to watch in the world. Oh my God! Yeah, I watched that on the way to Mexico, and I was so uncomfortable oh. the whole time. <laughs> and then I was. And then thinking, you're like bawling at the end. Then oh, you're like, oh yeah, that was brutal. Okay, okay, we'll keep going. Cats or dogs? Uh, freaking dogs all day. I hate cats, and I'm allergic to cats. So, oh, God. Yeah. what's your favorite breed of dog? Uh, I don't really have one. I like all dogs. You I like, like little dogs. I have a Chihuahua Min Pin mix. He's Ooh. seven pounds, and people either love him or hate him. Oh, I like, but he hates I like everyone. little dogs. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chihuahuas are kind of assholes, but yeah. yeah. Most irrational fear? Cockroaches. Oh, my God. I like, the... I could, I'll, I'm like paralyzed around cockroaches. Can't when, handle it. When was the first time you saw one? Because growing up in Chicago, they don't have them there, really. Not really, no. Yeah. It was just always this, like, mythological thing. Like, you know, I'd hear these stories growing up about cockroaches in their you know, they'd survive the atomic bomb. Yeah. And if you see one, there's thousands of them behind the walls. You know, it's like, so they've just always been just really creeped out by them. Dude, I had, the, I've only seen them a few times outside, like traveling or whatever. I think I saw the first one in Atlanta, but this past year, they were in my house. Oh no. In Eau dude. Claire, Wisconsin. And I freaked out and I'm oh, like yeah. Googling it. Like what in the world? Cause I found like two of them, right? No way. And I called the exterminator. Cause I'm like, oh, this must mean I have thousands right. of them. Right. Dude, one night I woke up. It was dark, right? Totally black. Woke up. There was one on Get my face. F- oh my and I god! Threw it off dude. my face, and it's they're so big I could hear it oh, hit the yeah. ground. Oh yeah, because I didn't have carpet. Are you, yeah, you trying to give me nightmares right dude, now, man. Next morning, I just saw its leg on the ground. Shut up. Yeah, it didn't die. Well, of course and now it didn't dead. die. Well, so how that Ugh. happened? Not that anyone cares, but I had I had it was in my wood pile. Your so what? wood pile because I have a fireplace. Oh, sure, right? sure. Right, and so some t- these were wood roaches, which look similar, but they don't infest your house. Oh, thank so God. So after I thank got my God. house sprayed, there was only the like three that had made their way in, but sure. one was on my face, and it was the worst oh, thing ever. Oh my God! Okay, dude. so uh, move that to is the better literally parts. <laughs> like <laughs> you nightmare. could not have told me a more terrifying story than well, that. Well, <laughs> I'm glad I got to have oh. such a horrible but memorable impact on you. Yeah. Favorite part of your day besides seeing cockroaches. Yeah, uh, favorite part of my day, uh, man, I'm a very like optimistic, kind of happy-go-lucky guy. So I try to, I, when I wake up every morning, my first thought, I try, it's not every day, but I try to say like, just throw like a, ah, thank you for this beautiful day, you know, just kind of throw that out to the universe and like, you know, try to uh, just get myself in a positive mindset. Um, so yeah, honestly, if I feel like, my whole days are pretty good. Obviously, I love that first cup of coffee is always good. Thank you to, uh, what is it? Minimum Wage Tims. Minimum Wage Tims. Can't wait to try that. Um, but yeah, I mean, listening to music, putting some headphones on, listening to music, going to see a movie. I mean, out on tour, obviously, getting to hit the stage and perform. Um, so yeah, my days have a lot of highlights. Do you have any th- part of your day that you just like really don't look forward to? Dread? Um... You know, not necessarily. Honestly, on tour, kind of like having to like find like a bathroom and like a shower is the most annoying part of the day. You guys are driving on tours right now? Yeah, we have like, uh, we've got like this bandwagon that we're all traveling on. And um, so, yeah, it's like, like today, honestly, I don't know. I haven't showered yet. I don't know if there's a, a even a shower in here. I'm going to like, yeah, to have to like... Throw on the flip grease. flops and like sit like, you know, <laughs> squeeze into some dirty ass venue shower or something. That's that's probably the worst part of the not day. the rock star life that everyone thinks. No, of. not in, not even close, but it's fun. You know, what's the best part about Chicago? Oh, man, I love, love, love Chicago. Um, I mean, the city is just such a beautiful city. It's like the perfect mix of like New York I guess it's not much LA, but it's, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, you have that Midwest attitude, the Midwest hospitality in a big city, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, Wrigley field is incredible. The lakefront is incredible. The art Institute, you're an artist. Yeah. One of the, the, the absolute, I would say the greatest art museum in the world. And I've been to a bunch of them. It has the most bang for your buck 
the, everywhere you turn, there's like a famous painting that you've seen your whole life, you know? Yeah. Uh, the food is great. Um, there's a movie theater called the Music Box that is like this 100-year-old theater that plays all kinds of independent films, classic films. It's like the greatest experience ever going there. Um, yeah, not a, not, I, I can't say enough about Chicago. Love it, love it. Speaking of art, I did actually go, like, I do follow you on your Instagram for your art, which is Tom as an artist now. Oh, yeah. So everyone's got to check it out. Do you have a moment? I know for me, like, what mine was. Do you have a moment um, that you remember that triggered you to want to paint? So I, I always loved art, even growing up. Like I said, I, I had the Art Institute in our backyard there in Chicago. So I was always going there. And uh, a lot of my friends are really good at, like, drawing and stuff. You know, that yeah. kind of comes with the territory with playing music. You know, a lot of people are just artistic and they, they have that gift, too. I do not. I cannot draw very well at all. Um, art so takes I, many forms. Oh, that's exactly. Well, that's the thing. It's like, and, and now that I'm like a art collector and just kind of obsessed with like art and different artists and stuff. I just like, yeah, I was able to see that there's people out there that, you know, just, you know, just doing it, just throwing paint on a canvas and make doing, doing whatever it is you do. That is special, you know, and that can be really cool and really unique. You don't have to be freaking like, you know, Van Gogh or something, right. you know, you can, just find your own lane and so honestly i just kind of started about a year year and a half ago just yeah painting and like just having fun with it and enjoying because i love art so much just yeah just putting paint on canvas it like it feels good and it's fun it's and honestly it's almost like a you know it's like a uh like a little break from from music you yeah, know what i mean sure it's like a way to be creative that doesn't involve a, a guitar or something so again with really no cool. expectations right exactly so you yeah. can just go about and do your thing well let me get one more out of you you guys are on your tour and last time i asked you to share um i think i asked you to share this normally i ask somebody to share or all the guests to share a unique experience that they had that was really great like meaningful to them on this tour what has been your most uh meaningful experience you've had well, I mean, I, w I would say we, we played New York City the other day. And it was just one of those shows. I mean, we had some label people out there from sure. our label. We had some uh, our booking agents and stuff. So it was one of those, you know, whenever you play like L.A. or New York, there's just a little bit more pressure because, sure. you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's just like in a little bit of industry, a little bit of just like those are the coolest cities. So you want to do good there. And... I don't know. It just happened to be one of those shows where you just kind of felt the magic in the room. You felt the buzz. Like we were killing it. We were in the zone. It's like we were locked in. The crowd was was killing it and giving it right back to us. It was just one of those really special shows. And I think the, for that to, to have been able to happen in New York City, uh, it was just one of those serendipitous, like just perfect moments, perfect shows. Yeah. Yeah. Except Minneapolis is going to be the best one now. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. A tonight is the night. <laughs> okay. Well, let's shout out one more time where everyone can find you, where they can find the music, what the name of the album's called, all those things. Yeah. So, uh, obviously plain white tees, Instagram, you know, plain white tees.com, Facebook, uh, all that stuff. Um, if you want to find me personally, uh, I, I pretty much just do Instagram yeah. social media, but my handle is Higgy pop, like Tom Higginson, Higgy, Higgy pop, H I G G Y P O P. <laughs> uh, and then I've got million miler is my 80 solo project. TLB is my, uh, my punk rock side project. Tom is an artist now is my art art handle that you uh you mentioned um people humans gotta go were be a here collector is, of your art now i mean before yeah. it goes like oh totally price. yeah it's fun i just we just had the day off yesterday yeah. and i i painted a just kind of messed around with the piece and it was fun uh yeah i was just again having fun with it and uh getting a lot of dms like oh how are you selling this people well, you know so it's fun that you know even though i'm not an artist I, I am, you know, yeah. just by just by creating, you become you become an artist, you know. Um, anyway, so yeah, those are my those are my reachable handles, and yeah. and the new Play One album out now. Um, it's I guess it doesn't really have a title. It's just Plain White Tees because the the image on the cover is just a T-shirt. Um, so yeah, like self-titled, I guess. But 
Yeah. You should do an alternate album cover that you do the artwork for. Oh, that'd be cool. Or do the, take the album cover and just kind of like paint around the t-shirt or something. Dude, that'd be kind of cool, actually. What if you did prints and then you just like hand embellished yeah. a handful of them or whatever, do it's like a, a Plain White Tees giveaway. That's People a great idea. That's a great idea. Well, you're welcome I'm doing for that it. idea. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.